Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have gathered here today to commemorate the martyrdom of the son of the Holy Prophet, to mourn his imprisoned family, and to cherish the memory of a woman that bestowed upon her was the legacy of spreading the message of Hussein to the entire world. A lady who is the descendant of the Prophet, a lady who is the daughter of Fatima, a lady who is the beauty of Ali, and a lady who is the messenger of Hussein. A lady that after the tragic martyrdom of her entire family, she became a guardian to the orphans, to the widows, and to her sickly imam. She defended her religion what she believed in, what the blood of her innocent brother stood for. A lady that truly and certainly changed the course of history. And we hope that, inshallah, together, by speaking about her, remembering her, we can learn valuable lessons from this unparalleled character the character, which is Lady Zainab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, to yet another segment of our show. Thank you very much for being with us. We hope that together on these programs we'll be able to uh, speak of Lady Zainab Salamu alayha, the history of Karbala, the occurrences that took place on the day of Ashura and every other day that came after that. And uh, together, we hope to be able to have a valuable takeaway from it all, to be able to learn a lesson, to be able to, through these programs and through these words, refine ourselves and reflect and ponder upon our actions and hopefully try to follow in the footsteps of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as with the words and messages that we have to share together. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. In the name of Allah, the All-Beneficent, the All-Merciful. All praise is only Allah's, Lord of the world. May his peace and blessings be upon the master of all prophets and apostles, Muhammad, and his pure, immaculate Ahlul Bayt, especially Imam of the age, Imam of the time, Imam of the world, our promised existent Imam, Imam Mahdi. May Allah hasten his glad advent. Assalamu alayki ya binta Rasulillah. Assalamu alayki ya binta Amir al Mu'mineen. Assalamu alayki ya binta Fatima wa Khadija. Assalamu alayki ya binta al Hassan wa al Hussein. Ya Zainab al Kubra. 
Salam to you, our dear brothers and sisters, discerning, respected viewers of Safir TV. I'm Said Mohsen Musavi here to talk a little about Zainab al Kubra. May the best peace and blessings of Allah be upon her. You know, to talk uh, comprehensively and elaborately uh, about Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, is a little difficult. Not a little, it's very difficult. Why? Because this exalted daughter of the Commander of the Faithful was given by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, many appellations, many epithets, which they illustrate, they show and demonstrate his, her dignity, her majesty, her magnitude. That's why we have to put a special time to address different issues of this great lady. For knowing how great, how dignity, how, how majestic someone is, I mean, um, throughout the, 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 the Islamic world of infallibles and their, their descendants, one of the best way is to consider the traditions is to consider the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them all, about that personality. One of the other ways may, can be also considering and scrutinizing the meanings of the, the, the appellations, the epithets given to those persons and personalities. And tonight, I want to consider some of those traditions, some of those authentic ahadith and traditions about Lady Zainab, may the best peace and blessings of Allah be upon her, so that we can discern how important, how magnificent, how, how significant she was in the sight of the commander of the faithful, in the sight of the venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of these traditions which I'm going to refer to is the one which was uh, mentioned in the book of Shaykh Sulaiman al-Hanafi in his famous book which is entitled uh, Yanabi al-Mawadda, section 58. You can go through and find it. It records the following uh, tradition, and you know, I'm going to just exert uh, only the point of discussion. You know, Rabi'atul Asadi reported that as I asked Hudayfa about a number of matters, religious matters and even non religious matters, different things, okay, he said, listen to this, understand it, discern it, convey it to people. He said that I have seen the Messenger of Allah, the Venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once uh, that uh, he said to me when I was on my pulpit, when I was on my minbat, Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, his grandson consulted to him, came to the mosque and, and went up to the knees, the blessed knees of the Venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he seated his grandson on his, on his kneel and his kneel and said, this person, this person is a person whose grandfather, whose grandmother, they're the best of people. This grandson of mine, son of mine, is the one whose brother is the best of people and whose sisters are the best of people. Zainab and Umikul. While Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, was seated on the blessed knees of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Venerable Prophet uttered his famous words regarding the magnitude and dignity and majesty of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. What did he say? He said that this grandson seated on my knees is the one whose sisters, whose two sisters are the best of people. Who are they? Zainab and Ruqayya. 
to uh, daughters of the commander of the faithful, peace be upon him. But it was not his last famous word. He continued that sentence and said, the, the, the position and the place of these two sisters in the hereafter will be nowhere except the paradise. This prophetic saying shows and demonstrates how significant, how magnificent was Lady Zainab in the sight of the Venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, whoever who is great in the sight of the Venerable Prophet, peace be upon him, is also great in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah in His book, whenever commands, whenever orders his, the, the compulsory, the, the obligation of His obedience, also commends people the, the obligation of the Venerable Prophet Muhammad's obedience and says, Allah wa Rasul. Obey God and obey the Messenger. So it shows how great and how magnificent and how majestic was Lady Zainab also in the sight of her Lord. There are many different traditions, there are many different authentic ahadith which really show the dignity of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. And I know that you've heard lots of these ahadith, but tonight specially I decide to recite for you of those which are not recited more. You know, there is another proof on the high uh, dig high and uh, great position and her exceptional and incredible position of Lady Zainab in the sight of Allah, which this hadith is uh, reported by Sheikh Sadur, our great uh, alim in his book, Ikmaluddin wa Itmamun Ni'ma. He reports that uh, once upon a time, there was a great companion of Imam al-Hasan, peace be upon him, al-Askari, I mean, our 11th Imam. Once upon a time, someday, one of his uh, companions consulted to him, asking him about different uh, matters of religion, different matters of religion, and he uh, just referred to the dignity of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. Imam Hassan, peace be upon him, said that, that our, our aunt, our paternal aunt, Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was very much great in knowledge. She was a woman of knowledge. She was a real knower of not just religious matters and affairs, even non-religious ones. That's why we see that one of the epithets, one of the appellations of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was Alima. It means knower. The one who knows everything in religion. That's why we see that she had different classes of inter interpretation uh, of, the ven of the glorious Quran or also the elaboration on ahadith that the, the, her classes were all held in Kufa and many different women, knowledge, learned and great women from throughout the country and throughout the city uh, used to consult it and attend to, his, to her classes because of the, the interpretation of the Quran. And it shows again how great and majestic she was in the sight of Allah. The personality of Sayyidah Zainab Alaiha is one that simply cannot be overlooked. She is so prominent, she's so profound due to the reason that she possesses all the prime characteristics a complete human being should have. 
It's something absolutely natural once you think about it, due to the fact that she was raised in the household of Revelation. She was raised in a house which was the place of the angels. The angels would rapidly and frequently be present in the house that she was born in, in the house that she was raised, in the house that she played in as a child. And she was raised by the hand of Sayyidah Fatima Zahra, Salamu alayha, the most incredible, the most unparalleled woman that history has ever seen to itself. Her father was Amir al Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam, the master of the believers. And of course, her grandfather was the chief of all of God's gospels and prophets and messengers. The character of Sayyidah Zainab Salamullah Alayha is an inspiration, not just for Muslims, but um, perhaps for every human being who has any sort of knowledge of history not just for men, but especially for women. Her character, her personality, her very existence is the best manifestation, is the best example we can see, especially for those who somehow believe that Islam is a religion that restricts women, that oppresses women, that limits their potentials and their chances and their opportunities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a Zainab, um, a character that through the observance of all the rules and the teaching of, teachings of Islam has been able to create history, a person that Imam Hussein alayhi salam has entrusted with a huge responsibility, a massive uh, duty which is carrying on his legacy. Now there are a few things that uh, we need to know about her eminence. A few historical facts that perhaps we have been, um, we have come across often enough, but um, talking about it is never never a bad thing, never a bad idea. It is always important for us to get to know her better and observe her personality in order to follow in her footsteps. Well, Sayyidah Zainab Salamullah Alayha was born in the city of Medina to an incredible mother, Sayyidah Fatima Tazahra Salamullah Alayha. As we mentioned, her father was Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. And um, I think the most prominent story that we've heard about her birth was her attachment to her brother Imam Hussein alayhi salam from the very first moment that she came into this world. A deep spiritual proximity of the hearts, a deep spiritual closeness of the minds, a deep spiritual and something on a heavenly scale one would even say. Um, the closeness and the intimacy of their spirit, something that perhaps we cannot yet grasp, but it is from that beginning, that is something that we need to totally observe, we need to pay close attention to in order to be understand. Now, to refer, well, have a brief reference to her past, her lineage, Sayyidah Zainab Salamullah Alayha, obviously from her maternal uh, from her maternal part, she is the granddaughter of the noble prophet of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, the messenger of God, the beloved of Allah, and the last of all messengers. We do not perhaps need to discuss the prominent character which was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam because it's not evident, uh, it's not hidden from us, it's self-evident, it's obvious. And her maternal grandmother is Sayyidah Khadija sallallahu alayhi wa Sayyidah Khadija is such a distinguished character in the history of Islam, in the history of the world perhaps. Uh, the sacrifices 
the selflessness that she had, the devotion, the conviction, the t determination, how she totally, absolutely, and utterly devoted herself to a cause which was divine and heavenly, which was godly. She devoted herself to the Messenger of Allah. And she did not hesitate to give absolutely everything that she had, everything that she owned, everything that she possessed, and everything that she was in this path. And verily, when we look in the history, look into the history, look into the life of Sayyidah Zainab Sallallahu we can see that the apple does not fall far from its tree. She is exactly like her grandmother. And we do even have a narration from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Sayyidah Zainab was first born. Rasulullah said that she is very much like her grandmother in character, in personality, and in, in appearance. Even her physical appearance apparently resembled her grandmother in many ways. And um, that devotion that her grandmother had to Islam, to the cause of God, that determination, that persistence, that Allah wariness, that very refined character that her grandmother possessed was passed on to her as well. And that the result of all of this is the personality which is Sayyidah Zainab Salamullah Alaiha, a woman who single handedly created history. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين Lady Zainab سلام الله عليها had the most exalted lineage any human being can ever have as you all know her great grandfather was the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and uh, he was the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And her grandmother was our mistress, Lady Khadija, salamullahi alayha, the woman who gave all her fortune and all her wealth for the sake of Islam. According to narrations, uh, if it wasn't, for the wealth of Khadija, Islam would cease to exist. So she had one big role in helping Islam and 
bringing Islam to existence. And her father, of course, was Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi afwal salati wa salam, the commander of the faithful. He was the second best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Prophet Muhammad. And her mother was Fatima al-Zahra, salamullahi alayha, Sayyida to Nisa al Alameen, the chief and mistress of the woman of the world. And on her paternal, paternal side, you know her grandmother and grandfather were uh, Abu Talib, the man, the guardian of Rasulullah, the one who guarded the Prophet and the one who supported Islam. And her great her grandmother was Fatima bint Asad, salamullah alayha, the woman who on her hands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam was brought up. She was the one that brought up the Prophet in his childhood when he was an orphan. And of course her brothers were Sayyida Shabab Ahl al Jannah. They were the chiefs, chiefs of the youth of paradise. These Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhim salam these were the brothers of Sayyida Zainab salamullahi alayha. So you could see how great the lineage of Sayyida Zainab was. On the day she was born, her mother gave her to her father, Imam Ali alayhi salam, and she asked him to choose a name for your daughter. But the Imam, in respect of the Holy Prophet, he replied, I will not precede the Messenger of Allah in choosing a name. So he brought his daughter Zainab to the Prophet and he asked, O Rasulullah, choose a name for your granddaughter. But the Prophet replied, I will not precede my Lord in choosing a name for this girl. So Gabriel the archangel descended from the heavens and he gave his salams to the Prophet in his household and he said, O Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the name Zainab for your granddaughter. She will be named Zainab and Allah himself was the one that chose this name for her, just like her brothers Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhim salam And the name Zainab, it is combined from two words, Zainul Ab, meaning she was the beauty of her father. Zainab means the beauty of the father. So this was how her name was chosen. And the titles she had, the Al-Qab or the surnames, they had a lot of surnames. She had many titles and al-qab, like the famous title al-aqilah, meaning the wise woman, the wise lady. She was wise, so she was called aqilah. Or similar to this name, to this title, you have heard aqilah to Bani Hashim, the wise lady of Bani Hashim, or aqilah to Talibiyin, the wise woman of the sons of Abu Talib. And another title of Sayyida Zainab was Al-Kamila, the perfect woman. And the third one was Al-Fadila, the virtuous lady. And a fourth title of Sayyida Zainab was As-Siddiqatu Sughra, meaning the junior voracious lady, as you know her mother was named Siddiq as Siddiqatu al Kubra, meaning the senior virtuous lady. So she had many titles and Al Qab, and the most famous one maybe is Ummul Musaib Zainab, the mother of misfortunes and the mother of tragedies because she suffered so much in her life. She was called the mother of tragedies. <laughs>
another famous title for Lady Zainab was Al-Alimah, meaning the woman of knowledge, the knowledgeable lady, because she was very knowledgeable and famous for her knowledge at her time. As you know, she uh, was born in the time of Rasulullah and she heard a hadith from the Prophet himself. She memorized his sayings when she was only three and four or five until she was five years old. And she memorized also the Quran as a child and the words of her father and the sermons her mother gave, like, like the sermon, the famous Khutbah al fadakiya the sermon she gave in the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad and other sermons also from her mother. She is the one that narrated these famous sermons until it reached our ears. She was the one that heard them and memorized them instantly just by hearing them. And she narrated to other generations. In her father's reign in Kufa, she was the most uh, popular and authentic and important reference for Islamic knowledge in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen when she was in Kufa, Lady Zainab held these lessons and classes of knowledge. She used to lecture the women of Kufa about Islam and she used to uh, recite the, ta the tafsirul Qur'an, the interpretation of the Qur'an and she was the most important reference for all the women of Kufa and not only the women benefited from Lady Zainab alayha, but also the men, even the companions of the Prophet they used to benefit from Zainab alayha, like the famous the, fam the famous uh, companion of the Prophet Ibn Abbas, who is a famous uh, mufassir of the Qur'an, he always asked Lady Zainab questions, and he used to frequently ask her about Islam and about the Qur'an. And he always said this uh, famous sentence, حَدَّثَتْنَا عَقِيلَتُنَا Zainab." Bintu Aliyan, our wise mistress Zainab narrated this and narrated that. So someone like Ibn Abbas, he also narrated from, from, from Lady Zainab Salamullahi Alayha. And other people like even our Imam, our beloved Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin, he has a very beautiful comment on his aunt Zainab where he says, after the day of Ashura, this famous line, Anti bihamdillah alimatun ghayru mu'allamah wa fahimatun ghayru mufahamah. O Aunt Zainab, indeed, you are a knowledgeable person who has not been taught, meaning the, that her knowledge was ladunni. This indicates this hadith that her knowledge was ladunni, meaning she wasn't taught that her knowledge, like the other imams, they were from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this hadith indicates that she was very close to the rank of the ma'sumin. Some scholars say she, had, she was an infallible, a junior infallible, or as they say, she had ismatu sughra, a junior infallibility. She had the knowledge, like just like the Ma'sumin. So Lady Zainab was famous for her knowledge and that is why she was famous by the title Al-Alima. And she should be a role model for all Muslim women because many people maybe in the West think that Islam is a religion that prevents women from seeking knowledge. On the contrary, Islam is a religion that promotes and encourages women to seek knowledge. As you all have heard this famous hadith and narration, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ 
ala kulli muslimin wa muslimah. Seeking knowledge is wajib and is obligatory upon every man and every woman. Every Muslim man and every Muslim woman has to seek knowledge according to this hadith. And Lady Zainab is an example, is a role model for every woman that wants to seek knowledge because she was the alimah, she was the knowledgeable lady and she was famous for her knowledge. So our woman, our Muslim woman should be the same, should seek knowledge and become knowledgeable just like their mistress Lady Zainab Salamullah alayhi There is an essence, a philosophy, a logic to Ashura and Karbala. A lot of us might oftenly wonder why did Abu Abdullah decide to take his family with him even though he knew that they're all going to be either martyred or imprisoned or tortured or tormented in some sort of way. He knew that where he was heading had no security. He knew that he could not guarantee the safety of any of his loved ones, any of the people he cared about, especially the women and the children. But something that we have to try to understand is that Imam Hussain alayhi salam is a divine entity. He is a heavenly creature and he's connected to Allah's limitless knowledge. He has divine knowledge and the source of his knowledge comes from God directly. So whatever he does, every gesture, every notion, every action, every movement, every word is well thought out. He doesn't do anything sporadically or randomly or out of whim. He's not like us. Everything he does has a logic, has a philosophy and has a wisdom. And we can see that manifest the most in the tragedy of Karbala. Imam Hussain Ali Salam understood that there are different aspects to this movement. Perhaps that's the main reason why he did it, because it was such a comprehensive, complex movement. And two important aspects to that, firstly, was martyrdom. To be selflessly killed in the path of God. And secondly, it was the act of spreading an important message at a time that everyone was living under a veil of ignorance and negligence. So what we can understand from this matter is that naturally the martyrdom, the aspect of being killed in the path of God was specifi specified for the men. Imam Hussain alayhi salam not only selflessly gave his own life, but there were the lives of his brothers, his children, his loyal companions, and even his infant child. And then there is the aspect of spreading this message. Something that, if we don't say it had a higher value than martyrdom, at least we can say that it was equivalent to Imam Hussain's blood. Imam Hussain alayhi salam naturally needed someone extremely trustable for this massive responsibility. He needed someone with capability, he needed someone with competence, he needed someone with strength, with wisdom, and importantly with intellectuality, knowledge, and eloquence. And thus he chose his beloved and noble sister, Sayyidah Zainab salamullah alayha. As we mentioned that uh, the role of martyrdom went to the men, the selfless, courageous, pious, strong men who beautifully put it and said that we find this martyrdom sweeter than honey or that if we have to die in the path of Hussein, be cut into a thousand pieces and then our pieces burned and then turned into ashes, we do it over and over again. 
And then there is the message. Sayyidah Zainab Alaiha was responsible for telling the world about the love that was in the blood of these people. Sayyidah Zainab Alaiha was responsible for telling the world about the philosophy and the logic of Imam Hussein's movement. And for that, like we said, she needed to possess a few profound attributions at their peaks. She did not, it was necessary for her to be a little over, above average, because Imam Hussein's blood is the most precious thing in the world. And Sayyidah Zainab Salaamu Alaiha had to tell the world about its most precious gem. know about the uh, supreme knowledge of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, it's maybe sufficient to refer to one of the most known authentic ahadith uh, about her, by which was narrated from Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, the son of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. He says this, the, these famous words were, uh, were, were, were uttered by Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, in, in, in hardships, in, 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 in that bad tragedy, I mean, the phenomenon of Karbala. When Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, was really, really suffering from the pains and hardships and the catastrophes appellation and, 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 and the, the calamities of, of, of losing her brother. Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, says, Anti bihamdillah alimatun ghayru muallamatin fahimatun ghayru mufahamatin. I believe this blessed hadith is enough to know her dignity, her magnitude and majesty. Really, it's sufficient. The, these famous words were uttered by who? by an infallible. This is so important. You know, we, we usually and ordinarily, when we want to describe the greatness, the magnificence of a person, we try to choose best words we know, best attributes we know. Is that right? And if we have a broad and extent of vocabulary, we may use words nobody knows. But an imam, an infallible, someone like Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, doesn't speak by emotion, doesn't speak by emotion. Whatever he says is the truth. That's why when we see these kind of words, these kinds of attributes given to our personality by an infallible. We should put much more importance on them to discern their meaning more than any other person's words. So you see, he first of all and before everything says all praise is only Allah's. He thanks God because of the thing he's going, because of the words he's going to utter, he's going to declare. What does it mean? It means that what? It means the point he's going to stress on, he's going to focus on, he's going to concent concentrate on, is, is a, a divine thing. That's why he says, oh, thank God before everything. Alhamdulillah. Anti alimatun ghayru muallamatin. You are knowledgeable without being taught. What does it mean? You know, when we want to acquire a knowledge about anything, about religion, or about, I don't know, any other knowledges in this world, we have to consult to someone. We have to participate in a classroom. We have to have teachers. But Lady Zaina, peace be upon her, did not have any teachers. But she was so knowledgeable. She was a woman of knowledge. Her supreme knowledge was proved 
by all history, historians and Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them all also, there, the meaning of this beautiful word uttered by Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, is that your teacher, your teacher and your instructor was no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fahimatun ghayru mufahama. You're wise without education. You were not educated by no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it also shows and tells us and we, we can really discern by scrutinizing and considering these beautiful words of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them all. We can discern the dignity, the magnitude, majesty of, 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 of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. One of the other traditions which they manifest how, uh, how majestic and how great was Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, is, is, is one of the miracles of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it's, 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 it's very beautiful to hear that. You know, uh, one of the miracles of Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was that he used to put his uh, blessed tongue in the mouths of, the, of Lady Fatima's uh, suckling children uh, and they were all satiated from that pure milk, which was a divine milk, really. So I think now you could understand where that supreme knowledge of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, comes. You know why? Because it was not just Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, who was satiated from the divine milk coming from the blessed tongue of Lady of, of, of the Venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It was not just Imam Hassan, peace be upon him, being satiated from this divine source. Also, Zainab. Lady Zainab, may the best regards and peace and blessings of Allah be upon her, was also of those who were engaged in receiving this blessing from the Venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, this narration is in fact a sufficient honor, a sufficient honor for Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, to be satiated from the source from which Imam al Hussein and Imam al Hassan, peace be upon them all, were satiated. Uh, we talked about the great knowledge and the supreme knowledge of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. The one uh, who Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, uttered his famous words about supreme knowledge and uh, said, Anti bihamdillah. I can refer to one of the most beautiful stories about Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. You know, whenever she wanted to go to make a pilgrim, to make a pilgrimage on, on, on the shrine of the Venerable Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Amir al Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, he used to go ahead to open the way. And Imam Hassan, peace be upon him, used to be on her right as her guard. And Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, used to walk on her left to guard her. Why? Because of her great stage of servitude in the sight of Allah, the commander of the faithful, peace be upon him, was so much careful about her. He had different classes of religious affairs and lessons. And one of those, like I said before, was interpretation of the glorious book of Allah, the pure sense, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the traditions, he talked about the meaning of the first verse of the, of the surah, Maryam, which no one can understand its meaning. What is that verse? It is Kaf 
ha, ya, ein, sat. There is no meaning for this word. And no one except for such a person, Lady Zainab, woman of knowledge, can give us the meaning of this beautiful verse. It is narrated from, from an infallible, peace be upon him, that in her class, he said, she said, car, uh, she said, the first letter of this, this word, I mean, K, stands for Karbala. And H stands for Halaka, means doom. And Y stands for Yazid. And Ain stands for Itra, means Ahlul Bayt. And also the last letter S, S, it is patience. So what does it mean? It means that Itra, Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them all, in the, in the Karbala, by their patience, they could invite the doom of Yazid. May the curse of Allah befall. been able to do the great event in history that took place in Karbala some justice. We hope that we've been able to shed some light on the philosophy, the logic, and the core of Imam Hussein Salam's movement. And through these shows and programs, we hope to have been able to share with you the lesson that was behind Sayyidah Zainab Salamullah Alayha's actions, we hope by talking about it and discussing it uh, to be able to understand it better and carry it out in our lives, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you so very much for being with us through today's show. We hope to bring you more in further segments of our program, so make sure to stay tuned. Until then, may Hussein and his love forevermore be with you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.